What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Let's Play Death Road to Canada with Dog and Pony. I'm Dog and Pony, and this is Death Road to Canada. We are starting a new game here, and I have selected our characters: Denisha, Denisha, the big bruiser who is also paranoid, and the and Guadalupe, the big bruiser that is berserk. I think that's a decent enough combination. I couldn't get any martial artists with the randomization. I really wish you could just select your perkin trait, and I realize that that is what familiar face characters are for, but I think it would serve a different purpose to be able to randomize them here and select perks and traits if you chose to. We're playing marathon mode. We're going to jump into it. I actually kind of like big bruisers for starting out. You can switch what character you're controlling in the pause menu for finer control because... We can get hit a couple times and be okay. Uh, Yalmar is the way to go. Moderate sluggish near noon. We're going to go barga bargain hunting. We got no weapons on either of us. But Guadalupe is going to be our lead for sure. Let's do it. Okay, great strength and then fitness and shooting are what we would expect. Uh, terrible middle column, of course. And we don't know really what this column is going to look like. Okay. We... Uh, we need to find weapons. As big bruisers, we're better off using weapons. All of our familiar character faces have been switched out for the berserk martial artist versions of them. I don't like doing that, but when we get literally double the amount of zombies by the like what, midpoint of the game, we we do need as much of a combat advantage as we can get, and nothing else really matters as much as the combat advantage. So, Berserk Martial Artist is the way to go when you're trying to stay alive in any of these extreme modes, like Marathon Mode. I thought we could do without it for the first run through, but turned out to not work so well. We did get a decent way through the game I I opted for big bruiser for the paranoid person as well in this case because it's really likely that they get hurt and we need our paranoid person to keep everyone else alive before we end up on foot or just for any bandit encounter really so the more health that our um, buddy has the better off we are I need to switch to smashing and fighting Though Defendant was working pretty well for this early stage in the game. Gotta grab this gasoline. Pretty nice haul gasoline-wise. Almost an additional 100 gasoline. If we could get, like... Is that a really long piece of wood? No, it's just two pieces of wood. Pixel perfect lined up to each other to look like one really long piece of wood. Yeah. If we could get a chainsaw and an electric hybrid... Both of those things would be very nice to conserve our gas and to use it irrespectively. The chainsaw uses our gas while the electric hybrid conserves as much of it as possible. Especially if we pick up someone that has the explorer tr trait, perk, whatever it is. Yeah, because any character you encounter has some perk and trait, I believe, or at least most of them do. It just doesn't tell you what they are. Whereas your familiar faces and your starting characters, you know what the perks and traits are. Also, some of the rare characters help conserve gas. I'm not sure which ones, I just know for a fact that at least one of the rare characters is an explorer in some regard. Maybe Rick, even. Or Rock, or whatever you want to call him. Sick Rhymes is my favorite one. Let's get out of here. That's all the food and stuff that we are going to find. We didn't get much food. Seven? is more than I thought we got. This is actually a, a pretty incredible haul for a first encounter Yalmar. I mean, they're usually pretty good. They're the best ones you can get for the first encounter. <clears throat> I'm gonna drink a little bit of coffee in a second here. But this is better than I've really seen in most cases. Just especially the 96 gasoline. Okay, let's get back on the road. Night Siphon, the group sets up camp late. On the nearby highway is a bunch of abandoned cars. They're broken, but many should have a little bit of gas. So would, would you like to send someone to siphon out the gas 
Absolutely not. We got minus four food and no gas, which is just fine because we've got plenty of it. We only lose, was it 12 gas at a time? Denisha is having near crippling tooth pain. Without access to precision tools needed, the only option is to pull the tooth out. She weighs the current options, force it out. She grabs a pair of pliers and goes to town, pulling the tooth as hard as possible, using nothing but will to fight through the pain. She gets the tooth out quickly and with surprisingly little trouble. Her strength increases, and it's revealed as good. I thought Denisha was our berserk big bruiser, and I was like, yeah, strength, boom, obvious. Turns out she's our paranoid big bruiser, but we know her strength now, and it wasn't good, and now it's okay. Let's keep moving on. Thankful for the the luck we just got. Yeah, we should try to find efficient cars, something, something, something. Quick looting, the group drives through a city that hasn't been completely overrun. You should look for supplies to stock up for the journey. Moderate sluggish afternoon, gun shop versus lost safe house. Now. Guadalupe is good at using guns. She is a berserker, which improves her shooting abilities, but not a martial artist that would take it away. Guadalupe smells funny, not haha -ha funny. That's unfortunate, but doesn't really have any impact on the game. On the other hand, though, the Lost Safe House will probably have weapons. Swinging weapons, if not shooting weapons. If not both, probably both in some capacity. And it'll have food. So we're going to go with the Lost Safe House. We want to get an early food supply. Also, we have gun. We have a gun already. We have two guns already. We're okay. I'm okay with that. I'm glad we didn't choose the, the gun shop. Now that I remember how many guns we already have. Safe here. Not so much, unfortunately. But I'm sure it was at one time. At least, briefly. Can we lift this fridge? We cannot. I guess... Uh, too slow to control doesn't always mean lifting fridges. I don't know if it takes plus two over max strength to lift a fridge, or if only TLB can lift fridges. And I don't know if we'll find out. I mean, all we need to do to find out is train her strength one more time. I'm pretty sure she can she can get plus one strength on top of what she has. So we could find out. But it... I don't know. It doesn't really matter. It's very rare that lifting fridges is an option to begin with. Like, that there is a fridge and that it gives us an advantage to lift it. Though it is... I think in cabins, it's one of the only loose pieces of furniture. Typically there might be a couple chairs, maybe a table, but typically it's just a fridge. So I think TLB has come in handy quite often in cabin rescues or just cabin looting because he was able to lift and throw that fridge and get a lot done that way. See, we even got a special gun out of this encounter. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. Didn't go to the gun shop, still have a uh, a nice selection of guns regardless and plenty of more rooms to loot okay one more room to loot did we already come down here I guess we did we didn't go this way though alrighty that's weird I don't recall going in this room that's the main entrance I know where we are now I was briefly lost I'm gonna take that pink purse I think it's good. I still haven't figured out if it's supposed to be good or if it's a joke yet. I'll give you that. So I can take the meat cleaver. Not that we need the meat cleaver, but it's it's pretty decent. At the very least, it can hit multiple zombies at a time, which is useful. I think that's everything in this house. So let's get out of here and uh, just loot the rest of the town now. How much food have we grabbed? Eight. That's pretty incredible, actually. And there could be even more. There could be, like, even six more. Maybe more than that, but I I'm guessing about six more in the rest of the town if we're lucky. We don't need that pistol, so I'm not going to bother taking it. It's just a waste of inventory space. 
I'll let her loot that drawer. She didn't, so I got it. Don't worry. One more food. Maybe a couple more food here. Yeah. And bullets for a gun we do have, which is nice. I mean, we don't have a shotgun yet. We'll find one sooner or later. Probably, probably pretty soon. Seven gasoline, more food. That's... That's... More than I expected. I think we are going to be pretty set on food, and we're going to be able to trade a little bit as well. I'm feeling pretty good about this run so far. And having a paranoid character is going to help us out a lot. We won't lose anyone to bandits. Though, to be fair, we didn't really lose anyone to bandits in the last run either. We uh, lost them to a single mall siege. Probably not going to be helped by a uh, paranoid person, but it will be helped by having all of our familiar faces, characters be uh, berserk martial artists. So as soon as we get like one familiar face encounter, we're going to be pretty much set and then we could get a rare character or another familiar face or even just like a decent mechanic or something and we'll be on track to win the game though anything can happen at any time so don't want to get too cozy here and too confident but i think we're doing a, a decent job i know we literally just started and have no real indication on how this run is going to go but we're bound to encounter a trading camp within the next what like five encounters tops and we, we might have a surplus of food to trade with. And that makes me feel good. So, I think we're doing well. Is there anything else around here to loot? It looks like there might be one more block up top, though I can't tell yet. No, there's not, so I guess we're going back to the car. Yeah, because every, everything's been looted. Alrighty. Back to the car safely with plenty of loot. I am feeling really good. Do I have any coffee left? I do, absolutely I do. 16 food is just an incredible amount. That's four days worth for the two of us and two days worth if we had four people. Nine gas doesn't do much, but it, we're, we're, we have a huge surplus of that for the stage of the game we're in. And the medical supplies are helpful because we don't have anybody that dies in a single hit. We're never going to make it all the way to Canada. Uh, morale's going down. Way to go, Guadalupe, for putting Denisha in a bad mood. The group camps for the night. Off a quiet stretch of the road, and my coffee is gone now. Lose to four food. Okay, in the morning, there's a moose outside the camp. It looks injured and is just glaring at the group. Even injured, a moose is a really powerful creature. Probably best to not mess with it. Guadalupe's not a great shot, so we're not going to shoot it. She's a good shot. Not a great shot. I don't know what stats you have to have to make these worthwhile. We're not going to treat its injury. We are going to wrestle it. Guadalupe wrestles the moose, arms lock with hooves in a test of strength and willpower. She wins this pointless contest. It's a triumph over nature. The moose seeds over the loss and saunters away. Her morale goes up and her fitness does as well, which is pretty darn great. Now we won't have to worry about running out of stamina quite as much. We should try to kill every zombie we can. Agreed. Weapon stealing bandits as the group explores a campsite. They are ambushed by bandits. They brandish makeshift weapons. They demand all of your weapons. This is ludicrous. That's a slow but sure death sentence. More, uh, Denisha comes to the rescue. The obvious choice. Denisha felt suspicious about the campsite, so she wanted to wait near the car. As Guadalupe is being robbed, the car barrels through the campsite, plows over a tent, and then stops. The bandits are freaked out, so they flee. Denisha's loyalty is revealed. She's pretty smiley. Her morale increases, so that's good. And Guadalupe's morale increases even more. Okay. I mean, the same amount, but to a higher value. That's pretty nice. Yeah, we should try to hunt for food. I wish we could do that more often. 23 food left. The group runs into a trading camp. Visit the trader camp. Gas to snacks conversion is just a useless person. We can get some free food or I guess just ammo out of these cabins. Maybe some food in the other one. Maybe a grenade. 
Food, 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 food. Food. It no longer adds to our loot in the car. Like, they briefly fixed that, and then they unfixed it, and I'm not sure why. Medical attention, we don't need. Carnage weapons, we can buy a chainsaw for 20 food. That would leave us with three, which isn't enough for a night, so... Oh no, that would leave us with five, which is enough for a night, so maybe we'll buy the chainsaw now. We don't need it yet, but it's nice to have. Though at the same time, we could get ruthless bandits that steal all of our weapons, and I'm... Not sure we want to do that. We... Oh. Relief for now. I want to look at everything there is... Available. Medical attention. We don't need. Leave for now. Shotgun peddler. Okay. So what, what I'm going to do is buy the chainsaw and then tell the shotgun peddler to cool it. This might be a waste of our food, but I think it's a pretty decent idea. So chainsaw for 20 food. Haha. Uh -huh. uh, ha ha ha. Perfect. Rip them all apart. Lose food. Minus 20. Okay. That's... That'll be manageable. I think we, we're early enough that we didn't need that huge surplus of food, and the best thing about the surplus of food is that we could buy stuff with it, so I'm glad we did. Guadalupe tells him to cool it, and we have a surplus of gasoline, which means we can actually use the chainsaw. Hopefully we keep finding more gasoline, because we will run out quickly if we have to use the chainsaw frequently. Recruitment of the fittest, the group finds a new person, Gerard. He, he is alone and wants to join the team. Gerard claims to be physically fit. He does a clumsy half cartwheel. Maybe it's an off day for him. Guadalupe has a gut feeling that this is a lie. His loyalty and fitness are both terrible. So I said that all characters have a perk and a trait, even if it's not shown to us. And then I said, well, most anyway. And what I think is that characters that lie about their stats don't have a perk and trait combo. Because if they're saying they have something good and it turns out that that thing is absolutely terrible, that must mean that they have nothing good, right? Or it's just a coincidence. It just randomly chooses a, a stat to reveal for them. I don't know. We're going to leave him behind because I don't think he's going to be good at anything. No one ever listens to me. We use 10 gas at a time, which is less than I thought. Trapped in house. The group is about to explore a small house when they notice that a horde is creeping nearby. The group will have to hold their ground for a bit before they can escape. It's a siege alert. It's a very large siege, but it's afternoon, so it's not going to be too riled up. It's not dark enough for them to get wild yet. But we got a one hour long siege. Try to survive. I am going to... Give Denisha this knife. I'm going to give Guadalupe the chainsaw and the purse. Yes. And we're gonna jump in and immediately switch to either and then start uh, whacking these zombies with the purse. It doesn't seem that great. I know I keep waffling between whether or not the purse is good or bad. I can't tell, but I think it's bad. That's my new assessment, is that it's pretty bad. So, do we keep using it or not? I'm gonna say, uh, no. Okay, we've got those zombies stuck on that chair. We need to kill the ones in this direction as quickly as we can and get up through this way, if possible. Denisha almost got hurt, but she didn't. Very nice. I want to lure all the zombies this way if we can. A couple are coming up the other side, but I think it's a manageable quantity. The siege is going to end in a few seconds. If we can just hold out, we won't have to use any gasoline. Okay, it's over. I think we should probably take out the chainsaw at this point. Oh no, okay, no more coming in through the door, so we're good. Yes, let's go. Left the purse behind and I'm okay with it. I don't think we needed it. We're doing really well. Can any human truly be too swole? What are you even talking about? And then morale goes down. You think Guadalupe would know, like, no, no human can ever be too swole. And uh, 
that would have boosted our morale instead. You know, as as a big bruiser and a berserker, glimmer of hope on the death row, the group feels inspired after managing to survive that situation. They feel like they are getting the hang of this. Choose a reward for the group. Morale and random skill gain is probably what we're gonna do. We don't really need to train strength. It'd be nice to. But getting Denisha's morale up is more important to me at the moment. So morale and random skill gain. Uh, we both train mechanical, which isn't a negative. I'd say that's pretty nice, I guess. We might have to fix a car sooner or later. And we don't have any actual mechanics in the group. Smelly camps at the campground that the group sets up smells terrible. The source of the smell is a complete mystery. We are going to endure the smell and hope for the best. The group endures the smell zone all night until passing out. They are not happy in the morning, but they are, were at least able to sleep. So morale is going back down. It's good that we got that morale for Denisha or else her morale would be negative right now instead of just at zero. Familiar faces? Whoa, it's Cameron. It's nice to see a familiar face. He is kicking a car in frustration. The car is emitting plumes of smoke. We're recruiting him to the team because he's a berserk martial artist and that's exactly what we wanted. The group accepts Cameron to the team. Cameron joins the team. Onward to Canada. All of our familiar faces are berserk martial artists. If I failed to mention that, I think I said it, but I changed them all back to berserk martial artists. I keep a backup file of that and our regular version. And when things get too tough, I switch to Berserk Martial Artists. While driving on the death row, the group decides to make a stop for supplies. Hardware store or apartment row? Apartment row, it'll have food. And now that we have another person, regardless, we needed more food. Now we need four more food instead of two. It's a thick and calm swarm in the late afternoon. We'll explore these apartments and Cameron is our new leader because he's only got one health and everybody else has more than one. We have two and a four. We have no one at at default health. I think that's pretty interesting. I want to give Guadalupe the knife. Denisha can stay, you know, unarmed in her way. And then I'll take the chainsaw since we do have plenty of open spots already. But we'll probably not use it. I've got a sneeze building up and it's really uncomfortable. I don't think I'm actually going to sneeze. I think I'm just going to desperately want to for the next like half hour. All right, I'm, I'm over it, I can deal. Nothing in there, might as well just close this door up. And, oh, I'm not strong enough to lift the bed? I think, oh, okay, never mind. I think Guadalupe would be strong enough to lift that bed. Cameron apparently isn't. What stats do we know? Oh, his strength, okay, right. He's a martial artist, so his fitness is already super trained, but his strength is just, it's, it's really good, it's not amazing. Um, I don't know why I said it like that. I didn't really intend to. I was just kind of trying to emphasize the word, not put a really odd spin on it. Okay, I thought this was just an empty room, but it turns out it was just a very wide hallway to an empty bathroom. Alrighty. These people have way too many bathrooms in their house. This might be an apartment building. It's a strange layout for one. Apparently it's got community bathrooms. I would hate that. It's like living in a college dorm, but with a bunch of adults. That'd be really weird. Having a community bathroom in an apartment building instead of individual bathrooms in each apartment. It probably exists somewhere, but I really hope it's not common. I've never encountered a place like that other than an actual college dorm, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Alrighty, one medical supply. How many do we have in the car? I haven't even thought about it, five. So we're up to six, that's a pretty good quantity. I don't think we have any medics on the team yet, but we can heal regardless thanks to the fact that we have a, a relative surplus of medical supplies. It's not going to be like the last game where Bobby was able to heal everyone with very few supplies, unfortunately. But I also think we're going to shoot for more taking no damage with our um, our combat ready group and paranoid uh, buddy here. 
or leader, or whatever she is. Okay, a couple more buildings to loot. I'd love to get another surplus of food, be able to buy one of those cool sword weapons or something. I'd love to encounter Lin, the new traitor character that you can recruit once, or recruit for one adventure and then buy the sword from. I think he'd be pretty cool to have in the group briefly. Uh, before we recruit a, a fourth permanent team member, I don't ever want to kick anyone out, unless we have like an actual really bad team member. I don't want to kick anyone out uh, for the sake of briefly recruiting Lin, but I do want to have Lin in the team at least once. I want to see what that's like. I wonder if it'd be possible. Probably not. Um, I was going to say to win a game with Lin in the party, but since he only sticks around for one encounter, he would, if you got him, if it's even possible to get him at the final trader camp, the last shop on the death road, I don't know if he'd stick around after the first siege encounter. He'd probably stick around for just the first siege encounter and then leave. So you can't ever win with Lin in your party. Unless if you encounter him there, he just doesn't leave because he doesn't have a chance to. I don't know. It's, it's probably not really worth thinking about. But either way, I would love to get that cold rolled steel sword or whatever it is because I still haven't used it. All right, a lot of ammo. And finally, some more food. We have enough, we have plenty, but obviously it's the most important resource in the game because well, besides gasoline, because it uh, allows you to buy other things. I think gasoline is also very important, probably equally important because you do consume it so regularly. The constantly consumed resources are the most important and that's food and gas. Everything else is optional. Medical supplies, optional. You just don't get hurt. Uh, ammunition, optional, just don't use guns. That's it, that's all the resources. Okay, back to the car. I was planning on that list being significantly longer. There's another house we didn't go into. Okay, cool, back on the road. Let's get out of here, it's getting pretty late. 10, 10 p.m. and the zombies are pretty riled up, but we are now safe. We got 16 food. Quintupling our supply, more than that. Non-tupling our supply, yes. That's probably how you would phrase that. 51 gas, which brings us back up to almost 100. Pretty nice. Two medical supplies and a bunch of ammunition as well. Okay, we're back on the road, and I gotta say that that is all for now. But thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to click that like button. Subscribe if you want to see more in the future. And if you want to help me get to 100 subscribers by the end of this month, January 2017, we are still on track to get there with just one subscriber a day. And I appreciate everyone that's already subscribed. And I hope that you, if you're not subscribed, will join them. I will see you in the next episode.